Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tammy Tucky Show. My name is Tammy Tucky, and it's good to see you. So in 2001, it brought the beginning of Barbie's movie debut with Barbie and the, and the Nutcracker, which I think began the golden age of CGI animated Barbie films. That included Rapunzel, Swan Lake, and it, it just came all together with Barbie's first full on-screen musical movie. And so I just wanted to say, get out your VHS tapes, get out your DVDs, because this is The Princess and the Pauper. On DVD and video, it's Barbie as the princess and the pauper. We could be sisters. Barbie plays the princess Annalise and her new twin best friend, Erica. They sing. I'm just like me. I'm just like me. You're just like me. You're just like me. Together with their adorable cats. Oh, please. They save the kingdom and find true love. It's my favorite. Barbie as the princess and the pauper. Now available on DVD and video. Includes a bonus CD with seven songs from the movie while supplies last. Oh, and the supplies last because it's been 20 years. So tonight we're going to be bringing in the cast and crew throughout the evening. And I'm very excited because there's so many of you already, 100 plus of you already in the group. Hello, everybody. Please make sure you're going ahead in the chat bubble and, ch and post your questions as we go. I'm going to try my best to get to all of them. Um, and we're very excited to bring on first. Let's start with the creative team because they really made the magic happen. They made it really all come together. So we're going to first bring Rob and Jennifer and William. So here they are. Where we are. There we go. I have everybody. Hmm. Hi, you guys. Hello, Tammy. <laughs> Thanks hey, Tammy. for having us. Thanks for putting this together. Yeah. Oh, it's my pleasure. So so why don't we go go down the line and, and tell us who you are and and what role you played in in just the making of this the, of this film. So William, you want to go first? <laughs> Hi, I'm Will. I uh, director of uh, Princess and Popper. And uh, Rob, would you like to go next? Thanks. Okay, Popcorn? sure. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I um, was Mattel's executive producer for the movie and for the first 28 Barbie movies. But this is one of my favorites, for sure. my favorite, I think, for sure. Oh, absolutely. And I'm Jen uh, Twiner McCarran. I was lucky enough to be the producer alongside Will at Mainframe Entertainment in Vancouver. And Rob came to our studio, uh, starting with the Nutcracker, um, and hired us. Um, to start working on these Barbies, which is, again, you know, I could go on and on, and I probably will, but the most amazing experience, um, and we did, uh, I had a long journey together, so Rob brought us together, and um, this was one of my favorites as well. I, I'm trying to remember who said it, but somebody said something along the lines of, you know, this was this was the big project, because you guys had been doing a movie every year, basically, which is, which is really tough in the animated industry just to kind of knock these out and they still look really beautiful when I get to watch them I really enjoy watching them I was watching this one again today because I just wanted to prepare and be ready and I got my my box lunch t-shirt mm -hmm. on so yeah. I got it in the mail in nice. time thank god <laughs> I love it <laughs> so so Rob and Jennifer you guys started out with the earlier Barbie films so how did you guys choose stories to go down the line how, like how far in advance did you choose the princess and the pauper from starting Nutcracker back in like 2000 2001 you go for it Rob I mean <laughs> okay all right well um well Barbie had never had entertainment before we did Nutcracker and so it was a big risk and um and uh, it was also a time when CGI tools weren't that great for flowing hair and flowing cloth. So we were really on the bleeding edge at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, But we interviewed lots of studios, and Mainframe was absolutely the best based on the work they'd done before on Reboot and other shows. And, um, and Anne Parducci, who now runs content over at MGA Entertainment, she and I brainstormed what story to do. And Nutcracker is a mother-daughter tradition. Um, and so we thought that would be a good place to start and it was gonna come out at, at holiday time. And so um, so we decided on the Nutcracker and then we wanted it to be a Tiffany production. So we brought in the New York City Ballet and Peter Martins and Prima Ballerinas. And so, um, so that's how we chose Nutcracker. And then we started a Barbie in the Arts program. So after doing dance, we did painting, which is Rapunzel, you know, there's a the whole painting theme in there. And then we went back to ballet because Swan Lake um, is another wonderful project. 
so ballet again, but then it was time to do music and we hadn't done a musical. So this was my first time doing a musical and we'll talk more with Megan and Amy in a second. Um, and we also um, thought what would be better than one lead Barbie doll, but two lead Barbie dolls. So we've got, um, and singing dolls. And so we, um, <laughs> so there was a little bit of commercial thinking in there, but also it's a just, it's a proven story. Mark Twain wrote an incredible story and there's, um, there are all kinds of mythic elements in the princess and the pauper and symbolism. And we, we put a, a surprising amount of thought into these movies and hopefully that's why they, uh, they uh, maintain their sort of resonance over time. Oh, absolutely. And and William, yeah. when did you get the call to be a, to, a director for this? Had, had you watched the other movies and, and you know, let them know and say, hey, I'm available? Or did they reach out to you? How did it work? Well, uh, I had to count my lucky stars because uh, honestly, it was uh, my first musical as well. My first Barbie, my career is mostly boys action. So I never really, uh, delved into the, the musical or the sort of the flowing hair and the dresses uh, much uh, in my career. So uh, it was uh, definitely a, probably a, a, a risk to kind of bring me on, but I'm sure you saw something in me and uh, had, uh, you know, a lot of trust in my ability to, you know, put the pieces together to create a, a nice little movie. And, uh, you know, I thank you for, you know, giving me the, the trust uh, to, to lead the team. Well, you then did a whole bunch more with us. Um, yes. <laughs> also grateful for. No, we had a lot of fun. And I learned so much, Will. When I think about who really trained me in the business, I learned so much about directing from you. And um, and, and also from Owen, who directed the three before mm -hmm. you. But you two guys really schooled me in how to move cameras. And I, I just learned so much. And I'm grateful to you for that. You're You're a wizard with cameras. Well, thank you for the uh, you know collaborative uh, uh, you know environment that you fostered uh, on the productions. Uh, you were definitely an amazing leader to all of us, and you let the creative juices flow, and we all kind of you know jammed together to to make something really wonderful. And uh, hard to believe, twenty years later, here we are celebrating it still. Like it's yeah. incredible. I agree with you on the cameras, um, Rob, and Will's amazing use of them, and I think. You and I were sitting in the Avid, you know, very late one night, as we did for so many weeks on end. And it was the first time we saw the two girls together um, facing each other and that song and the way the camera circled around. And yep. I distinctly remember, like, we were looking at our arms going. I know, I got chills just thinking about it. Do you remember that? The first yeah, time I we do. saw that scene yeah. and Will had put it together and it was, like, still very rough. It wasn't fully rendered, but hearing the amazing music um, from Amy and Megan and that you had written mm -hmm. as well. And then the, the way the cameras were kind of circling them, we would just, we got chills and that, yeah, even watching that trailer, Tammy, when you played it, my tears burst into my eyes. <laughs> well, definitely so the music. It, it really made it really easy to, you know, come up with uh, the vision, the look, because it's it just, you know, it just touched my heart. Like it was just this wonderful song and you know, I couldn't do anything but dream of these, you know, amazing shots with these two really powerful characters, right? And uh, yeah, it just kind of flowed. It was an amazing synergy with, uh, with everything. Thinking outside the box, because, you know, you, you have, you have set, sets, but you can only use so much of them, right? You can only utilize so much. And it's trying to figure that way to, to keep it flowing. And just watching it again, it was like, it, it has this wonderful pace to it. A true musical. And uh, we're having so many comments right now. So let me pull up some of them. Rachel says, I vividly remember watching this movie as a kid. And it had an immediate impact. And it holds up against the rest of time. I think these movies are a great, great way to get kids engaged in classic arts. And and that was the premise, right, with Barbie, because as you said, yeah. dance, art, music. So so what was that process of like trying to choose, you know, trying to choose those themes throughout the and, and keep the integrity of, of making sure those themes are, are still, you know, strong throughout the film? Throughout this film, you mean? Yeah, well, this, this film one, and, and all well, the other ones as well, too. It, it, it seems like it was a it's a process, right, because you're building the story, right? Yeah, well, we knew girls loved to sing. I mean, kids love to sing. And so um, we thought this would be, um, that would also be sort of a hook. I, I 
was reminded that when you put up at the end, it said it includes a CD of the seven songs while supplies last. I think it was a million or two million of those that we sold. I mean, and um, with with the DVD, I mean, backing up for just a second, when we released Nutcracker, Jen, back at the beginning, we didn't know if it was going to work or not. No. And then all of a sudden, Glenn Ross at, you know, maybe we'll sell 500,000. Glenn called me. He said, these things are flying off the shelves. And by it was out for two and a half months. We sold 5 million copies in the U.S. And so, wow. <laughs> so then like the first week of January, I was sitting with Anne Parducci in her office. We were like, holy smokes, this was so successful. We have to make another one really fast. Yeah. It, it was thought, just like a small line item that we, it was a flyer to see if it would even yeah, resonate at the start. Right. To see if it would work. The toy line was pretty small for that. And then it was like, oh, well, what would be a good, you know, we'll, we'll focus on painting. What's the best selling doll we've ever had? Oh, it was totally hair Barbie, which had hair down to the, to her feet. So, oh, Rapunzel. That's how we decided on Rapunzel. So, um, Anyways, it was a surprise that these were as successful as they were, not just in the US, but we sold just as many internationally through Universal. And so, boom, it just happened. And I think we spent a lot of time, Rob, one thing that you know stayed in my heart. Um, I found out I was pregnant with my first daughter on this movie. Um, oh. uh, but we, you know, we spent a lot of time um, talking about um, how uh, her character and who you know she was and you know, kind, clever, brave, yeah. uh, and those um, sort of making sure that she was so in, intelligent and a leader. And um, it just, you know, those conversations will stay with me forever. And I feel that they impacted on an intangible level um, the success of the movies. I think you just described yourself, Jen. Oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. No, we really cared about these movies helping girls be just those things. Kind, clever, yes. brave. Those are the things we talked about. Barbie is always smart, always smart in all these Absolutely. movies. We insisted Absolutely. on that. So that because smart characters are more interesting and we also wanted that to be what girls aspired to. And so um, and she's always polite. She's unfailingly polite, except in uh, Christmas Carol, right? Which um, oh yes, where we let her we let her play a villain, which was like, ooh, should we do this? Or but we did it, and that didn't tarnish the brand. So um, no, I just watched yeah. that for the first great, time this yeah. Christmas. I liked it. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a good one with other you know fun songs, and um, so um, anyways, that's a, just a little backstory on the whole franchise. Well, here's another comment. This is from Minty. Uh, not a question, but more of a thank you. Because of Barbie Entertainment's franchise, I'm on my way to work as a designer for Fantastic. Mattel for Barbie. Thank you for well helping done. me find my way. That's okay. a Love hard that. job. That's a really hard job to get because those Barbie designers are the best in the world. They are so talented. Um, a lot of them come out of um, FIT or Otis or they're, they're fashion first and just anyways. So that's good for you, Minty. Bravo. Yeah, huge congratulations, Minty. That's amazing. Joni says, my cousins and I are having a watch party. They're watching all of us tonight. <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's fun. Um, Ariana, she's a, one of the admins at the Barbie group page. I think I sent it to you guys. It's like 3,000, 30,000 people on this page. She says, wow. I believe Tammy will be reading the chat box throughout with the questions. And this is just a reminder. Please send your questions. I'm going to try my best to get to as much as we can. But we, I do have some other questions set up as well, too. Um, let's see. Let's see. I guess Michael Douglas is in the chat. He says, hey, Jen, Will, and Rob, great to see you all. <laughs> nice to meet hey, you. Michael. And you, Michael. Yeah. Great to see you, Michael. <laughs> always fun. Always fun. Uh, so, funnily so, enough, I just ran into Michael at the Nutcracker. I still go every year. So, hi, Michael. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. So, so when did you choose? Um, I, I saw there was another question in the chat. I couldn't find it, but somebody had said that originally um, there was like a Cinderella in the making after Rapunzel and around the time of Swan Lake, and then that was kind of withdrawn. I thought I remembered a Barbie coming out around that time, but were there any any projects before Princess and uh, Princess and the Pulper, uh, or was Princess and the Pulper something no, we, like you had no, decided we, what you were going to do? We made a choice and we went um okay so we would test concepts um just as like a single image and a paragraph and mm -hmm. um 
have three or maybe four and then figure out which one would do best. And so we're, you know, lots of variables and what would make a good toy line, what'll be a good story, what do we think will make the world a better place? So. Mm -hmm. Well, Rachel says, uh, I, I made an Erica dress a couple of, year, of years ago. It's awesome. Um, what went through the design process of how you wanted the film to look visually? Well, let's see. Do, do either of you want to talk about Walter? Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you want to, mm. uh, you know, uh, kick it off, Rob? Because he started with us right from the get-go, too. No, he was on Rapunzel. We had yes. um, um, a different... Uh, art director, oh, that's uh, right. I'm uh, forgetting, um, not correct. Rob Jensen, yeah, uh, was Rob Jensen on, internally, yeah. and then there was another internally yeah. uh, person that's externally. Right. But um, it was early days. Walter, Walter was a genius. He sadly passed away, but um, but he was a genius in terms of color and color theory and using color to tell a story. Um, and he would design and, in CG as well, which was unique at the start. You know do his paintings within the CG world. So you could really, I remember that blew us away, Rob, early on. Yeah, yeah. Seeing that. Will, how was it for you working with Walter on all these movies? Oh, he's an amazing visionary. He he was a world builder. He like, he sees the world in a, such a unique way. That, uh, you know, it's always, you, you know, so surprising to see when he comes up with the, especially the fantasy worlds, uh, the fairy topias and all that. It's It's just so amazing when he comes up with, the sets and the props and the, uh, you know, the, the, the little fun characters that go along with the, you know, the, uh, the space. So uh, definitely, you know, uh, um, you know, a very a unique visionary. He could have been an architect for real because he would build those mm -hmm. castles, you know, all the oh, rooms. Yeah. He would yeah. actually, he, he would literally build them. He would work in the architectural yeah. software. And, and one thing, Walter, I mean, his use of color and tying it into the Barbie themes was incredible it was but it's so classy um and one thing i you know I, where i work now at atomic cartoons uh, a whole team of animators has a bibble wall um, oh i love that yay <laughs> <laughs> there is literally hundreds of bibble sketches and that was another uh to your point will fun kind of you know uh, character that um walter had you know helped us design and and put forward and lives on <laughs> Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> Bevel right, and yeah. Preminger are on TikTok. We'll get to that in a second. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> For sure. It's it's crazy. I love opening TikTok and I just see Barbie memes left and right. And everybody's posting about that and asking that. So we'll jump into that in a second. Uh, Brittany wants to know, what is your favorite scene in the movie and why? Well, what do you think? Oh, I think when they first meet, when Alan Lee's and Erica first meet, I think that's just a wonderful connection. You know, I think everyone was kind of waiting for that to happen. And um, just the way they befriended each other, uh, we tried to capture that as genuine as possible. Um, you know, the, the mocap actresses did such a wonderful job. Uh, they uh, definitely brought a lot of life and, you know, just genuine character to both of them, but have, you know, very unique, you know, sensibilities, of course, and Annalise being a princess and Erica coming from, you know, uh, where she comes from. So having those two kind of uh, come together and then trade places was, was super fun. What about you, Jen? Gosh, you know, I did love um, the, the bath scene with all the bubbles. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the cat's meow there. Um, that was just, it was like a feat for the team technically and it was just yeah. so magical i i agree like the goosebumps of them meeting is you know still makes me cry but um that that scene we kept saying bubbles more bubbles like <laughs> right that's it. right whoever was like i think we need more because it was just <laughs> so beautiful and magical and then that song cats me out was just i love that i know i, I want to play that let's let's pl let's play a little clip of that and we'll get to yours rob here here's okay. uh, what you <laughs> are is a strange you doesn't mean you should change you only means you should change your point of view. Princess Annalise? Hey, feline, you to fetch just fine to thine own self. Be true. Look at those cameras. Amazing. 
my heart. so perfect. Look at that set. That set was just beautiful. <laughs> oh, my heart's yeah. exploding like a bubble. I know, I know. It, the bubbles. It's a really... I didn't really and... notice that until you said it. You sent it in the email. And I'm like, yeah, like now I really am noticing it when I was watching the movie. I'm like, look at all those bubbles. It's I great. Love it. But oh, the theme okay. of the theme of that song, we can talk about it more with Amy and Megan, was just be yourself, you know, and celebrate who you are. That's the best <laughs> thing you can do is be yourself. And um uh, what was the one scene the one well, those two I think, but the one I would add is when um when Erica has to walk in and meet everybody for the first time as a princess, and she's so uncomfortable, of course, because who wouldn't be? But when she walks in and she trips oh, and she yeah. falls on her face, that was also, we had a lot of debate about that. Would Barbie do that? Would she fall on her face? And we were like, yeah, let's, let's make a, a fool out of her for a minute because that's yeah, it's relatable. human. It's relatable. <laughs> Makes her vulnerable, and that's, that's mm -hmm. likable. So I think I'd say that, yeah. I remember those conversations debating it. <laughs> yeah. Would Barbie do this one? It's so interesting because another favorite project of mine, Barbie themed that happened back in like 93 was Disney had her be the friendship ambassador of Epcot. So anybody who's mm -hmm. watching this now, you want to check out the magical world of Barbie, which was right. a stage show they had of Barbie. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, um, and it was amazing. And I just, it was one of those things where it's like, they, they questioned because I talked to the, the woman who played Barbie, Beth McShane, and that was one of their key things is like, what would Barbie do? What would she sing? How would she move? What is she going to dress up like? Because it was it was they and Mattel was like very involved with that. So how when you're working for Mattel, how does that work with the corporate side of things? Like are are, are do you have some, you know, suits in the room with you as well who are kind of going over the, the must haves of a Barbie movie or must nots? <laughs> Well, it was, um, so we would work very closely with our marketing and design and finance department, but it's really marketing and design. Um, uh, in the very, the very first movie, we had to move fast. So it was just Ann Parducci who ran marketing and Ivy Ross who ran design and I meeting once a week to go through designs and things like that. But it's, it's definitely a partnership and at Mattel marketing is generally the last word on what happens. And um, and so we would, we would, but it was nice once we had agreement on the script and once we sort of, we would get all the fashions from the design team, from the amazing Barbie designers. But then we were mostly uh, left alone to make our movie. And um, I mean, they kept working. So like, why mess with what's working? So um, yeah, so, so yeah, so we just, we, yeah, we just kept going. Sometimes, and then we started making two a year. We even made three a year a couple of times. Oh, so my goodness. We got, we got very busy. Yeah. That's great. And I Hazel love wrote in the original or the new Barbie, the live action Barbie with like Mate Will Ferrell. Mattel. You, know? <laughs> you know, it's so funny about that because when I worked on the Barbie business, um, men were maybe 15% of the entire brand in terms of. Yeah, really? Uh, so, so the whole Will Ferrell thing was not really what it's like at Mattel, and <laughs> and and when we started all this, Jill Jill Barad, um, who was an amazing CEO, um, you know, was a woman. She was there for many years and did an amazing job. So, yes, it wasn't right. like that. But, it, no, but that no. was a great movie. I don't mean to diss the movie mm -hmm. at all. I thought it was a wonderful movie. That was great. I had the same reaction though, Rob, because it was so many women we were working with. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Was that was my only qualm with that lives. movie is because they were hitting like specific eras from 80s and 90s. And I was like, y'all totally forgot about the Barbies that happened later. It would have been a nice homage to you guys, at least to have something referencing the films and also the Barbie dolls that came out because there was a ton of merch. So behind me, I have Serafina and Wolfie. Oh, uh, yeah. The little dolls uh, that you can nice. see and has a little, little Barbie on the bum. Uh. That's right. Whereas, that's right. Doesn't she say that? I have dirt on my bum is what she says. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hazel wrote, I got my boyfriend to watch Princess and the Pauper last year. And now we quote it to each other. And he went with me to the live action one. That's oh, awesome, Hazel. Good for you, Hazel. Yeah. <laughs> that's so good. One other tiny bit of trivia is that Serafina, there was the big Serafina. And the other new thing we did in this movie was have it be interactive. We put a code in the movie where if you had Serafina, she would be watching it with you and commenting on the scenes. 
So yes, that, I remember the was, commercial for that. <laughs> yeah, it was a big success, actually. But oh yeah. Anyway, just another bit of trivia. Oh. I had the Barbie dolls that say like it, they have Julie and Melissa's voices, and if you press them at the same time, they can harmonize with each other. So you I have no idea. Oh. You have no idea how hard it was to pull that off. And I remember we finally we did all the singing recording in the fall, but we had to get all these chips done before January first so that we could make the dolls in time for the next fall. I remember like right up to like Christmas Eve being in the Mattel sound studio working on these chips. So oh, anyway. yeah. we're talking about music. So we should, we should bring in the music team. So we have Megan and Amy who worked on the songs. And we also have Greg who was an editor on the film. So let's bring them on board, Greg, Megan, and there you are, Amy. Sorry. There Hi. you are. <laughs> Hello. Hi, hey. you guys. Hey. Thanks hey. for joining us. Amy, so long. We us. haven't talked in three hours. <laughs> 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 Hi. Still getting projects. Hi. Thank you, Tammy. Tammy, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful for all of this. And and I'm really educated on, on what came before because it Amy and I had I mean not speaking for myself, but I'm speaking for Amy too. We had no idea. <laughs> we we had no idea. And we were from the musical theater world, which Rob is is it correct that that's part of what our appeal was as a team? Absolutely. I don't know if you remember, I was thinking about this in advance. Lori Plager, who sure. worked with me at Mattel, she's the yes. one who gave me your name. And we met at um, Pete's Coffee on Larchmont. That's yes. when we first got together to uh, to meet and talk about what could we do this. And it was your Andrew Lloyd Webber experience that made me ah. think, hmm, I think this, I think she's the right tip top caliber of person to, to come in. And then you brought in Megan and here we are. Yeah. I mean, uh, Andrew and I weren't working anymore together at the time, but Megan and I had been working on a musical in New York that uh, went uh, a few places and is coming back again. So that's great. But we, we, Megan and I sort of cut our teeth in the, the BMI musical theater workshop in New York city, which is such a remarkable place. And um, that's where, that's where I learned to write songs all together. And, um, and Me Megan's been writing probably since you were just 15. out of the womb, out of the womb. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I mean, when I was paid to write my first musical, I was 15. But um, uh, I have to say, you know, and I, I also went to NYU, so um, uh, the graduate school. So I had a lot of the um, 11 o'clock number, I one song opening number has to have this, this, and this. So I had a lot of that going in. And Amy and I, by the way, at um, the BMI Layman Engel workshop, were like the only girls. And so I love what she did and she loved what I did. And a couple of years later, <laughs> many years later, we're still working together on things. Right. And it's a blessing because a Amy is like phenomenal to work with and, and wonderful. I, I thank I thank my lucky stars. Thank you, hon. And back at you because it, you know, when you're working on something like this, you have to have a spirit of play. We both had that. And and kudos to you, Rob, because you play, You had two hats in this, right? You were our executive, but you were also a songwriter yourself. Yeah. You had a songwriting background. So we never had to go outside the room to get an approval of anything. You were it. And you played with us. You played right. with us linguistically. You Oh, you know, so nice. Thank you. There, was, yeah. there was no um, like I'm the boss kind of thing. You were just like in it collaboratively, which Rob, I really appreciate because you're like, we're in the sandbox of writing this, this and this. And there was a time Barbie was running over. And I remember um, Rob saying, not him. They want to cut the cat's meow. They, they're having some time things. And I'm like, that's an anthem. That's the 11 o'clock number. That's the da, 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 da. We're not. And that, and that's about, it's too deep for me to cut that. And you're like, yeah, I thought so. So I told him no. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank he God. Like, he was like, <laughs> we're doing that song. Um, yeah. And maybe you have to cut some other things around. So like, I appreciate you, Rob, um, for, oh, thanks, for standing Megan. up for. Hey, I was the editor. Don't blame me. I didn't suggest cutting that song. <laughs> <laughs> that was my idea. You had a harder job. <laughs> Then you had a harder job. 
be, because right. there you, was, you, you had to bring things in on time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, our, made it work. our overall integrity. time had a little bit of leeway. We didn't have a hard and fast time right. because it was direct to video, not for television. So right. it could grow a little bit. And Greg, it's, you, it's an you, hour and a half film. It's it's yeah. long. I forgot. I think it's one it of our was. it's one of our longest. I think it was. I think. Yeah, but it goes so like it just it, it. I guess as I said, it just works. It it keeps rolling. You're never bored. Um, I have to pull up this comment because it's just so amazing. The Shinobi Four Thousand says, "Thank you for if you love me for me, Aww. I'll be walking down the aisle to the oh, song in June." I love oh that. Goodness. Awesome. You know that's, that's awesome. wonderful. I know. I know, Rob. Um, Amy and I get get a lot of emails like there's a guy in Italy doing a song on a bridge and like all of the world um Muslim girls with burqas on and things doing like you you've seen that Rob and it's like it touches a lot of feelings because I think Amy and I wrote we write from our heart and whenever there's like a little music thing that's not working, <laughs> Amy points it out. And whenever there's a little lyrical thing, I'm like, huh? And so we <laughs> call it like futzing, like, or um, vomit draft. Is the <laughs> okay, now you <laughs> really, vomit draft. really yeah. go deep. Now, we do call it vomit draft. Okay. It's whatever comes out first. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's best, but it like, means no. there's something probably in there. Yeah, yeah and it comes from something some valuable place. Yeah. yeah. Right. That place. But what's beautiful about the songs in this movie is that they are embraced in the millions of millions. multiple hundreds of millions of streams by people all over the world, different languages, different cultures, all with that same theme. Especially, I'm I'm just like you. You're just like me. Yeah. Right. And it's not just kids who grew up with this. It's yeah. their kids, and. It's people it's, who, who did grow up with it are now in their 20s, 30s, right. um, who still use it as a touchstone. I am always blown away by people who will sing this back to us and where we'll find another usage of, of or, that particular song. I'm just like you. Yeah. So again, I, I'm the editor. I can't take any credit for any of the music, but yeah. I got to work with what was sent to me from Amy and Megan, the wonderful songs that they made. And I really enjoyed cutting to them. I remember Will and I cutting mm -hmm. uh, the I'm a Girl Like You song and some of those, like the uh, the dress snapping transition where the sparkly dress becomes mm -hmm. Annalisa's dress. Oh, um, so the one good. I really liked, so good. The one I really liked working on was the How Can I Refuse? The Preminger <laughs> yeah. song. That was fun to cut together. Yeah. Should we watch a little clip from it, Greg? I yes, think that was a yes, perfect lead yes, in. Please. Let's watch yes. Preminger and How Can I Refuse? <laughs> When our ceremony's over, I will rise and take the throne, and that nitwit Annalise can kiss my shoes. For the kingdom and the castle will be mine and mine alone. If the crown should fit, then how can I refuse? So get ready when the roses end. Stand by with the champagne. When you've got a brilliant plan, you never lose. Yes, before the tactical stuff, you think it's a It's a thankless job, but how can I refuse? How can I? Snappy oh, editing, Greg. Snappy. Oh, snappy. it's so yeah. good. Yeah. I still remember well, Mark Short recording that. It was like that. Well, what was that I, like? Please, well, detail. Let me, let me, I just have a story to share about that, which I think you guys will remember. And that is, we thought he was perfect, right? Because he's so funny and he sings so well. He's perfect for Preminger. And we recorded him. We had an initial four hour session. And we recorded that song. And, it, and we knew we'd written a winner. We knew that but it just wasn't that funny. There was something wrong and we just didn't know. It's Martin Short, the lyrics are funny. So we had an option to bring him back for two more hours for another $25,000. We paid him a hundred <laughs> right out of the bat. So we, we brought him back awesome. um, and, um, and, um, and we were recording and it still wasn't funny. And I remember, I think Megan, mm -hmm. maybe we were kibitzing or all of us. Right. Like, and suddenly we had this aha, it's like, and we asked the engineer, can you please slow the song down four beats per minute? Not much, but just slow it down. And then he had enough time to rule and do all his yeah. interesting, crazy um, yeah. twists That's and turns. That's why we ran long. 
<laughs> Those four beats per That's minute. Right. Yeah. But then well, we had time. You could have BPA for me or for from Rod, but I, I do remember um, he was so wonderful to work with. And I think the lyrics are so fantastic. And I think that BPM slowing it down just by four PPM, which is which is a tiny bit, gave him more time to act. Oh yeah. Right. That's exactly and so happened. I think that was was a was a really good call. And sweetest guy to work with. And also I'm real I'm from Philly, so I love hockey. So we were like talking about hockey. <laughs> and you so much nice. nice. down that I was like, I'm hockey. I'm an ex hockey player. And he was me too. At Rob, yeah. we'll and talk he, hockey later. Yeah, <laughs> can, can we talk yoga <laughs> after you talk <laughs> hockey? That after, but um, it was a it was a great call. And although the instruments didn't sound exactly the same, he's so musical that he could follow the new beat. And not a lot of actors uh, can do that. So he has a musicality in him besides his unbelievable humor and his characters and everything. So I, I, I think that that musicality that he had naturally in the slowing it down, Rob, which was, was an awesome idea, gave us like more time to, to do acting which, and comedy, which he's a genius at. So um, then I had his, to fix the thing, <laughs> just teasing. <laughs> Speaking of his acting and pacing and stuff, I remember specifically Incredible. working on this and cutting his lines together and not to throw any shade on Martin Short because like the, the performances were incredible. It was amazing. It was actually an embarrassment of riches, all everything we had. Yeah. But sometimes like he was very manic, like a Robin Williams, like in the record. Mm -hmm. So he'd be like up and down and back and forth and all over the place mm -hmm. and like right. volume would change. And like, so sometimes we had a challenge to splice takes together to find something that yeah. would would work because obviously when he's doing it he also doesn't see how will's going to use it in the scene necessarily right so mm. we, we did a lot of splicing his stuff together <laughs> like, to like many great artists it was moments. just coming through him wh yeah. wherever he was channeling right. whatever he was through doing yeah. right That's channeling right. yeah totally yeah no, but his stuff but is amazing. Fix it and yeah, you, you did a great, we great job in, yeah, yeah, right. in fixing it. <laughs> but the way you, you amalgamated, uh, you know, the takes and your choices really created, uh, I think, a really cool character. Because, you know, you, like you're right, he gave you so much to work with mm -hmm. that, you know, you just picked all the gems and uh, you really made a very memorable character. Well, you guys approved all the gems, so. <laughs> well, Greg, and when Greg is so talented that we, you then became a Barbie director also. I did. You asked me to direct the next one, and I said, "How can I refuse?" <laughs> <laughs> and and you yeah. did a wonderful, wonderful job on every movie you did. Well, thank you. That'll be next year's reunion. Absolutely. Tonight's Will's night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Jen, Greg, let's, and Rob, really. Yes, we had so much Greg, support from you guys. That was, that was so Greg, let's take a look at some of the. Uh, voice clips just from random different segments of Preminger that you had to work with and, and put into the film. This is somewhat something that a fan put together. I, I just, it's too funny. So here we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Hilarious. That's, That's a great funny. example of what I was just talking about because yeah. all those little noises he makes weren't necessarily part of those takes, right? Mm -hmm. We would snip them out and put them in a little bin. We we call it walla when we collect all the little noises that people make, like breaths and efforts and laughs and giggles and stuff. Mm -hmm. So in our walla bin, we would have every example of every noise he made and we could pick and choose and put them where we wanted to when we needed them. I love the one where he slinks away in the throne room with Julian. We're like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of fades out. That one's amazing. And you can I, see once you guys slowed down that song, I remember everyone's like, oh, now he's acting because he had time to move his body. And we were filming it just for reference for all the animators. And yeah, that's you right. Can see, no way. Yeah. So we just so people could see his like his physical acting started to happen. And 
you can see some of that in those in those tapes. Oh, you can absolutely see it in his performances yeah because yeah. we used it as reference yeah and you've got to leak that acting, please too. leak that exactly. jennifer yeah. <laughs> i remember rob telling martin a couple more laps some more laps because we only had him for a few hours you know the second time yeah. how about a louder laugh how this da, da, da. <laughs> so he was like mm -hmm. you know <laughs> he, was, he was really great at doing all that stuff but it was it was on a time crunch i remember Rob. it was work. Yeah. i uh, yeah i was sort of sweating there like about yeah. 20 minutes in when it wasn't working i was like something's wrong yeah. something's wrong something's right wrong. wait would that have would that have been more than a thousand dollars a minute is that yeah it yeah doesn't well, matter. Whatever. you know yeah. what yeah okay yeah okay. we got well, the genius out of martin short i think between the music the pose the producing, the directing, and that's why I think this movie is successful because we had such a um, such a deep collaboration, and we, Rob, told me something once that Amy and I always kept, and and Rob said like Barbie has to be the smartest one in the room, period, like she has Barbie has to be that, and it related to Amy and I because. You know, we're minorities in the in the the song in the music and the and the business, scoring yeah. and and the whole business, and we just related to that so deeply. But Amy and I also have this crazy sisterhood, going back so far when we were when I was our teens, where I didn't dress well and Amy would be like, "Wear that to the interview." <laughs> like, so, <laughs> well, you you have to support each other, and that and and being able to write uh, something where girls were supporting each other and. There, thereby, you know, yeah. girls who grow into women were supporting each other was really yeah. important. Rob, we spent a lot of time on that. And it was great for, for me. I had two sons, no daughters, and I never actually. <gasps> oh, where'd you go? So uh, what Amy's saying is. Amy, you there? I know her. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> well, maybe, her tomorrow maybe, about another song. <laughs> Did you catch that or well, did I disappear? It's about it's it's really about um not only empowering women, but but Rob is a, a huge supporter and 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 everyone in here, including the other producers like Jessica and um Shelley. Jessica, yes, we have yeah. to shout and out to Jessica. And, and it's really um it's about women um helping women and men who help women. It's not just women helping women. It's it's the when the when the world comes together and we're equal, that's inspiring to everyone. And so I think that's where like the song kernels came from, uh, that truth. And that's why I can't tell you how many like a couple of years ago on TikTok, like um one of our songs, um, I think there's two of them. One was free from another musical we wrote. And one was if you love me for me and they were number one on TikTok, and people were contacting me and so i asked my kid at the time do you know anything about like me for me she's like yes yeah, i'm on tiktok you know because <laughs> they were 15 you knew the it. <laughs> but i'm just saying that um uh when you write from a deep place in a truthful place um that's what happens it um community doesn't go out of style and and, and mm -hmm. it also it, yeah you know exactly amy it, and we wanted doesn't. to connect with people, all people. And, and that's I, why, how many languages was this translated into? 20? Uh, 20 I, I did a lot of those. Four, 25. Yeah. Right. And, and, and Megan, you, you, your dream. The international um, barbecue. Megan, you, you directed all those singers, right? Yes, all over the it world. It was wonderful. It was oh, great. Yeah. Wow. And then I did it on a, a, other, other composer stuff as well. And then um, uh, Island Princess and things. And thank you, Rob, for that. Because... Um, Thank you. No matter where we were, you had to convince different countries who have different um, ideas, uh, very diplomatically, on how things have to be. So, mm -hmm. I learned a lot of that from Rob. <laughs> and I learned but a lot of it from Jessica, who's finished. not here, because yeah, Jessica, Jessica, yeah, Jessica, really, yeah. Jessica Durchin is and a, Shelley, is, yeah, yeah, and Shelley so, too, yeah, yeah, Jessica. Jessica Talk about Jessica, women, women. Jessica had worked on um, the Barbie um, CD-ROM, Barbie fashion designer. So she already knew Barbie, oh. and um, and I had met her at oh, Mattel. Oh, I remember and that. Game. Left Mattel, <laughs> and when we needed a local producer and just somebody to really help me manage the Mattel side, Jessica was the perfect person, and 
she was with us on yeah. how many movies? 10, 12, oh, yeah. more. And she yeah. kept doing the translations for years and years. So she's one of my dearest friends in the business to this day. She's to this day too. She's a star. She's a star for sure. Yeah, Who we never wants her. any credit is just like, can you do a demo for Scooby Doo? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just helps help so much. Yeah. Real first I, I have just one last song. One last song thing is we used to talk when we were writing about Schmenken, which is oh, Ashman and Menken. That was our and that was our standard. We had to clear the Schmenken bar. Right, and that Ashmenken was my bar. We had to we had to go over Schmenken, yeah. <laughs> and so that, that was mermaid. Good. Yeah, and Schmenken. By the way, um, I had worked. Uh, with with Danny Elfman on on eight projects, including Nightmare for Christmas, and Danny named the dog Schmenken because he was like, "What are Schmenken getting? How much money are Schmenken getting?" So, That's you know, cool. Danny taught me to film score and 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 so much about animation and 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 working with that and things, and tell stories through music because that's what we what we do. There's words, and there's and and all these people support us, you know, which is amazing. On um, on these songs, but we like to think of the music as the glue. Yes, the songs are the glue. Yeah, and that's important because well, let's jump in because we still have some more. We have some more cast members. We're going to join in because oh, some of them you. were a part of that music right. process. So yeah, yeah we've yeah. got Julie, who was the singing voice of Erica, <laughs> and Melissa, who was the singing voice Yay. of Annalise, <laughs> and also. Brian, who is Nick? Hello. Hey. Hey, hey. hey Brian. Nice hey, to see everybody. Hey. Hello. Hey, Rob. Great. So excited to have you guys. So let's start with Thanks the Thanks for ladies. having us. So, <laughs> it's an honor. So how did how did both of you hear about the audition for this piece? So, or or were they you just called in and said, hey, could you do it? <laughs> Julie, you go first. Um, well, uh, Megan is a dear friend of mine and Megan called me one day and said, can you come over and work on some demos for me? I'm, uh, essentially auditioning for this project and I need a singer. I said, of course, anything. And, uh, so it, it turned out it was this project. Um, and at the time, I think, um, we, so we, we recorded a couple of songs, I think Megan, a couple, yeah a few of the songs yeah and then you know i kind of forgot about it and then next thing i know she says um that she got the job and um and then she said i think she said i i recommended you they're they're looking yeah. to um to do the doll first they want to get the toy out mm -hmm. first and um you know so and they like your voice and you know would you be interested in doing the doll i was like I, yes <laughs> i would love to be the singing voice of a barbie doll um and so so i did i did the the singing voice of erica in the doll um and uh then after that was when they began the audition process for the film and um I think I did audition. I mean, I think I was sort of like in consideration while they were looking around and um, and just sort of waited. And then um, probably when they found Melissa, I don't know if we ever like sang together before we were cast, did we? We did, we did. So. We, did? Yeah. we had several yeah. callbacks, yeah. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so I wasn't involved from the ground up like Julie. I had a manager at the time, and they were looking for young musical theater singers, you know. And so <laughs> when I went into audition, I just had to sing any song, and it was for a casting director, like in just in a studio, like not a recording studio, like a theater studio. And uh, they played Kelly Sheridan's speaking voice for me, and they said, "This is the singing voice. This is the voice you're going to try and match." So I heard her say her speak and I was like, oh, I can do that. Like it just it like suddenly I was like, I got this. And so then I sang and then the process after that. Yeah. So Julie and I actually don't you remember, Julie, in our callbacks um, at the we were actually like, in recording yeah. studios. We yeah. were swapping parts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A lot. We That's right. Yeah. Singing together. And um, mm -hmm. it, was, it was really cool. It's like one of those rare moments in life where you're like, things are going my way. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we get to keep coming back and sing. It was really cool. It was very cool. Yeah. What about you, Brian? Very how were how were you brought in to 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 play the one of the henchmen in the? No. <laughs> Well, it was uh, a fabulous process. I think I was 
um, just so excited to. I was I play so many big guys and bad guys and tough guys and Transformers <laughs> and GI Joes to yeah. get to work on a on a Barbie movie was a change of pace and something wonderful to be able to do. And I, can, I can't say how excited I was to be able to work with uh, not in studio but with an icon like Martin Short. Just knowing that he was on the film, someone who I grew up just uh, adoring his comedy and his theatrical skills and some of the reasons you'd go to theater school was because of a guy that was just an icon like Martin Short and then to get to be a backup dancer to how can I refuse <laughs> like come on that's, a, that's the best sequence ever <laughs> but um, I absolutely uh, loved it and of course to play just a big dummy was uh, was an absolute blast so much fun so much fun <laughs> well, let's, let's watch a little clip uh, this is probably one of my favorite lines from, from the movie that you do so here we go Command you to unlock this door. Yes, Your Highness. <laughs> yes, Your Highness. <laughs> We're in charge. Right. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> could you still do it, oh, Brian? Yeah. Could Could you still do it? Which one? The the the, the, the uh, I, 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 what I love about seeing the, the sequence is um, the late and lovely uh, Jan Rapson, who uh, who played. Um, a knack with me in that sequence. It was so fun to do to do that work. We're in charge. I loved it. I actually love that sequence in the mines <laughs> as well. When when Knack finds the rock, what idiot put this here? And it's the stone that ends up cracking open with all the jewels in it. But um, I think I spent most of my time uh, in the recording sessions with uh, with Jen and Rob, just making um I don't know. A wall of library of uh, of foolish sounds coming from this. this I remember dummy. you failed that audition though, Brian. Like it was like your first take, and it was like, oh my god, we were all laughing. It was bang on. It was just like there it is. Oh, amazing! It was so much, and and early on in my career, that was, and that, I'd say some of these projects you get to work with such a high level of of performers and producers and music. Um, was is what just was was a, was the push that that made me you know enter this career and and have a a flourishing one for the past you know 25 years it's just been phenomenal and uh, it's especially to everybody in the Vancouver industry when we worked on these things and, and even every time Rob came up I think I worked on I don't know how many of these uh, you did Rob a Fairytopia Thumbelina <laughs> Three Musketeers I ended up on probably four five six more Barbie. Um, well, over the years. And you and did, just you did three Hot Wheels series with us as well. And I Max did Steel do a lot with of Will and me. Yeah. Yeah. I worked with yeah, you on Island did. Princess right. and also on, I think, three of the Max Steel movies. Yeah. 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 A lot of stuff. So, uh, um, it's just, it's been a fun ride and, and exciting to do. And even just talking about this show and going back and just looking at some of the work I did on it, it's hard to kind of rewatch what you did when you were, when you were younger and newer, but it still holds up. Oh my gosh, this show is, it's, it's really <laughs> fabulous. It's like the Three Stooges. It, like, every time the, the two scenes of both of them, I'm just like, oh, I, I just love that classic comedy to it. It makes me laugh every time. Were, were you were you the one of the ones who was singing the backup vocals with Martin on the How Can I Refuse? Do you sing or is that you? I can't remember. I've sung on a lot of things, but I I think remember. it was you, we, Brian. I think it was. I think we might have done those. And do you yeah, remember? Yeah, it was. It was you, Brian. I think yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, I okay, think yeah. I know that. Yeah, yeah, there was just a small amount of that we got to do. We were mostly dancing, and we were incredible. Whoever animated that, go on. It looked great. I will. <laughs> well, got to give a shout out to all the incredible uh, mocap artists and the, the talent and the animators that you know, yeah. uh, you know, completed the character that you know finished yeah. it all for us. Yeah, you guys, uh, yeah. definitely gave it a, a really good start, but um, you know. The, the the mocap actors and and the, uh, the yeah, Luke designers Carroll and artists and all that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. amazing stuff I wish there was so more good. behind the scenes of these do you think there might be a remastered version of some of these films in the future that might come out and then we could see some of the the, the footage of Martin Short and the mocap artists you know I, it's really nothing out there I tried looking everywhere <laughs> well there's there are me me or me and Amy <laughs> singing stuff. But I don't think it's for our people's ears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. So <laughs> I, I have a few things out that I've I've done um because people have asked me to sing them or something like that. 
So I've I've done a couple a couple solo things, and people are always asking for shoot music. And, but but the, the huge thing is when people send me from and Amy from around the world and and Rob, like mm -hmm. I'm sure Jennifer, you've got it too. Like they'll send me something and it's a totally different language or or something like that, and and then they'll send me um a video of them singing or, or playing accordion <laughs> or playing an instrument <laughs> to it. And it, it feels, it really fills our heart because um, we, we wanted to make something authentic from the heart and reach people in a way um, that was top level. Um, even though we didn't have the money like D Disney or anything like that. And I think we, we succeeded because, um, you know, the truth of, of, of what we were doing was um, to change the world, you know, in a, mm -hmm. in a and make it a better place. And I think people relate, relate to that. And that's, you know, Rob's vision. I hope I'm not misquoting or anything, but, you know, you really inspired us to raise, to raise the bar. And Amy and I are like, <laughs> dogs with bones, we're like, okay. <laughs> well, we realized we really could make a difference for a whole generation. <laughs> I just don't only, understand why they wouldn't put this your music on Spotify. There's so many yeah. other generations that love what, Tammy? So, so I didn't. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just saying. I, I I'm just curious why they didn't put all of the songs, the official album, on Spotify yet, or anything like that. Is it? Do you know if there might be news about that might happening in the future? Might be. Well, or who not, do you talk or... to? <laughs> 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 Just have to talk to the, the, I guess, the marketing team in El Segundo. They have their, they have their reasons for doing things. I have a question for Melissa and Julie, which is, which song did you enjoy singing the most? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Princess and the Popper. My, I have two favorite songs. One of them I didn't sing in. Cats Meow. I love that song so much. Uh, uh, <laughs> the lyrics, everything. Um, but my favorite song to sing is was Free. Um, it's so mm. beautiful and it had so many twists mm -hmm. and turns and two bridges, you know, mm -hmm. so like, mm. and I thought the harmonies were really beautiful. So I just loved, it's just that epic, it's like epic musical theater, you know, princess stuff. Yes. I mean, obviously I love singing the cat's meow for sure. Um, mm -hmm. and, and definitely, I mean, I, I, I really liked, um, I, I'm a girl like you. I loved, I loved singing with Melissa. I loved being in the studio with her. I mean, any of the songs that we sang together, um, I think we were, um, it just was, we had such great chemistry and we just were, our voices just matched so well together. And, um, the songs were so beautiful. So, I mean, I like them all, but. Yeah, we get, I get questions sometimes from people like, did you take the upper harmony or did Julie take the upper <laughs> harmony? Cause you can't tell, like our voice is just gonna do this thing. It's pretty, it was pretty cool. <laughs> It was You're sort of like, over. I just remember, like, it was, sometimes it was cool. like, do you want that one? Okay, I think you did that one better. You take it. Okay, yeah. I'll take this one. Okay, yeah, it was just, yeah. But at the end, yeah. Julie, you were lower. <laughs> and Melissa was oh, higher. No, sometimes I was higher. Yeah. You were it, it higher just a kind of, yeah. around B flat and yeah. B. Because the, the, those were your your incredible um, belt notes that were. Belt notes. Incredible. I remember you saying that, Megan, about Julie. It's like, she has an amazing belt. <laughs> yeah but it's yeah. it's true melissa thank you and thank you everyone i mean it it's such a labor of love and there's so many people behind the scenes that we're on the same track i just am mm -hmm. so humble and i am so thankful and grateful for everyone uh, me too and, Let, and let's melissa, take a listen we... and... oh yeah. go ahead oh go, go ahead, ahead. Go, no i was just gonna say how do people respond when you tell them oh i sang on this movie for Barbie. Uh, I've oh my. been getting fan mail of emails for years, years, and I saved them all. They're, they're the most beautiful emails and people um, will send me uh, the, the memes on TikTok or on Instagram uh, all the time, like friends will say, oh my God, you're on Instagram again, or you're on TikTok again. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I think, it depends on obviously how old someone is, but um, certainly if it's somebody in their 20s or 30s that grew up with these Barbie movies, um, they go out of their mind. They're just so excited. 
it, but even younger, Julie, because I, I, yeah. I've had the great fortune to teach. I teach voice and I've taught young people for like the last 13 years from like sixth grade to like college usually is kind of like my, mm-hmm. my, my group. And even just a month ago, a student goes, so I was rewatching Princess and the Popper old school and I thought this voice sounds familiar. <laughs> And then she like she was like going out of her mind. Yeah. So it's, it's it's been really really cool to like get to teach all these young people who like love every single one of them loves Barbie. I don't think anybody doesn't. Yeah, they all grew up yeah. with it. Yeah, the best. So uh, just a just a I wanted to get a quick snapshot of all of us here because Brian is going to be heading out so we can have our next guest come in because we only can have like 10 <laughs> people on the screen at once. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm just glad you joined oh, in like this is glad you joined in last minute. I, I love that. Absolutely. And, and thank you. So let, let's do a, <laughs> let's do a, uh, and to say hi to everybody. Let's do a Kodak moment. Everybody look at the camera and smile. Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. Perfect. Oh awesome. Gosh. Thank you so much for coming, Brian. You're the best. And we'll Absolutely. talk more, I promise, because I know you did more. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Great to see you, hey, Brian. Bye. Really Thanks, good to Brian. see you. Bye. Nice to see you, too. And and also let's let's uh, let's jump into uh, free. I, well, let's listen to a little bit of that um, while we're waiting for our next guest. Oh, I love it. Now I fear I'll never be. Soon I will never be free. I close my eyes and feel myself fly a thousand miles away. I could take flight, but would it be right? My conscience tells me stay. I was higher there. (laughs) Yeah. The opening number, you know, always has to be like, like set up where the world's going to be and also set up the characters. So an opening number, I don't know how we nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Amy and I just <laughs> still writing an opening number for another musical years later. But um, it has to set up the, the world and the characters and the vision and the tone to bring people in. And so what was wonderful was, um, you know, me, like, first, like, just playing piano and, like, trying to convince Rob, like, this is awesome! Like, <laughs> like Steven Spielberg on Jaws was like, you know, uh, and, and John Williams was like on the piano, going bah, 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 and Steven Spielberg was like, "Nah, just do." I'm going to trust you, but like to have the support of 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 Rob right away on on free was was important. That's that's like you have to bring them in on that opening number. You know what and else that song accomplishes? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it also. It also had to set up the twin nature of the girls visually right. and how they were, how their experiences were exactly the same. And we worked and that, with a cultural. And that's why they were in unison, Rob. They're together, right, exactly. And then they break up free. So that that is um, that's that was a cue for. And the other person who really, them. really helped us with that was Laura Shamus, a cultural mythologist yeah. who would write these amazing yes. analyses and help us with the symbolism of the movie. You'll notice that in the movie. Uh, uh, Annalise is from the celestial realm and Bar- and Erica is from the earthly realm and you only see Erica going upstairs you'll never see her going down yeah. and you see um, but then eventually Erica also ascends to the c- celestial realm there's a whole Persephone myth thing in Annalise winding up mm-hmm. in the mine you know deep in the you know deep underground and then having to be resurrected from, from there I mean there's a lot we there's a lot more. That. There's a lot more behind the story than it might appear at first. We talked, uh, yeah, we, Rob. We that that talked must that have been you, lot. right? That must have what? been you. It was. It certainly wasn't well, from Mattel. No, no, a, we went. No, Laura Shamus. She's consultant. just. No, she's a really, really smart person. Robert McKee was our other key consultant, and yes. Cliff Ruby yeah. and Lana Lesser, who wrote the first seven or eight Barbie movies, who are amazing. We all we would get on the phone with Robert McKee, who's a huge story guy. He wrote the book story, and he really helped us craft these yeah. scripts. And she helped us with the symbolism. Um, she we saw Barbie as Aphrodite, as that was our right. archetype. And Aphrodite's flower in classic symbolism is the rose, which is why it's a rose here. 
we had originally had lilac in this movie, but she said, no, 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 that's a, that's a death symbol in like Germanic um, fairy tales or something. <clears throat> oh, so, my. so that's why the rose, <laughs> that's why that whole scene with the scented um, stationery, which, um, which Julian catches on to right away. It doesn't smell like rose, which is Aphrodite, which is Annalise. So anyways, we do a lot of that Art sort of writing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> archetypal well, let's, stuff. Let's bring on the voice of Barbie that so many of us grew up with in the <laughs> chat room. Everybody is still chatting away. Thank you guys for watching. Um, we have her here. She's here, everybody. Here she is. It's Kelly, the voice of Barbie. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey, Kelly. How's it going? Hello. Great Can to you hear me. Story. Okay. <laughs> yep. Good to How see you. How are you? Welcome to the show. We're so we're I'm so excited. Well. <laughs> I'm so what like was what was your original headphone off here? <laughs> <laughs> well, what was your original audition like for the first Barbie movie for Nutcracker? Because that that was your first role as Barbie, right? That was the first. That was the first. Um, well, let's see. I was in university at the time. I was studying theater, and uh, me and every other gal in town here and in LA, and I think also Toronto and New York. Rob, you you probably remember that better yeah, than I. Yeah, we went everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And my agent actually had to fight to get me in. The casting director at the time said, oh, we're full. We, I don't know who that is. Sorry. So I had a really scrappy agent at the time and she fought to get me in. Thank goodness. And I, I don't know. I went in and I read the sides and it really spoke to me as a big sister. The sides were that scene at the very beginning when Barbie's talking to Kelly in the ballet studio and Kelly's struggling to pick up the routine and Barbie's just being a big sister. She's being like a normal normal teenage girl um and that's and that's how I read it and then I you know like all auditions I kind of left the studio and like oh that'd be cool to get but you know you kind of go on more auditions than anything else as an actor and then and then I got the call that I got the gig and I honestly didn't believe it until I, I saw the finished product I thought they've made a horrible mistake I don't know <laughs> I, don't know what okay. I was terrified through the entire first record but <laughs> oh my god it's, it, it's it's amazing well it it's so it's so interesting because this is the first time we've talked you don't sound anything like barbie so you really had to create the sound for her did they give you like a, a an idea of what they were looking for or you just kind of came up with something i can't remember what the original side said in terms of how they described her but that's a, that's quite a bit what i sounded like 20 something years ago whenever that was so <laughs> Wasn't too off the mark from how I sounded then, yeah. and I do remember once we were in the studio recording, um, not at the audition, but actually when we were recording the show. Uh, Andrea Romano directed that first um, mm -hmm. first film, like one of the voiceover greats. She's just an icon, and she kept repeating the mantra: "Kind, clever, and brave." Kind, clever, and brave. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, whenever whenever we kind of veered off course, she would just sort of like get back to that mantra. And I stuck with that the entire time I voiced Barbie. Whenever I sort of felt like, what would she do here? Oh yeah, kind, clever, and brave. Kind, clever, and brave. <laughs> so. <laughs> and, and Kelly's first audition, I remember it really stood out. Great to see you, Kelly. Jen. Uh, yeah, <laughs> with the um, uh, freshness. It was it was authentic and. Um, you really stood out as having sort of just this sort of lightness and fresh and uh, underlying enthusiasm in your voice. And, um, you know, when we, we, we set all the sort of selects, it really, it really stood out as, as kind, clever and brave mm -hmm. and, and real authentic. What were your thoughts when you, when you heard that this was going to be the princess and the pauper and not only one time Barbie, but two Barbies, you got a voice. So what were you like, oh no, or what were your thoughts? <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if I'd be voicing both of them. I think that might've been a question at the very, it was very a debate. beginning. Yeah. It was. Yeah. We thought about that. Yeah. How can we make them both sound like Barbie, but also distinct? Mm -hmm. So that was like a fun challenge in the studio. Um, and I recall it came, actually came together pretty quickly. I recall mostly talking to you, Rob, about it and realizing that like we could slightly vary the pitch and like where the voice was centered in the body for both of them. You know, Annalise is a bit higher and lighter, a bit more like kind of heart centered. And Erica was a bit more kind of fun, kind of like lower chest, and like a bit more grounded, a bit lower in the voice. Uh, and then Erica 
because of her upbringing and Annalise because of her upbringing uh, just had a slightly different diction and a slightly different way yeah. of talking. So Erica had more like contractions in her speech and a bit more like kind of casual and a bit more like spontaneous, less like studied and performative, whereas Annalise is royalty. So she would be more um, you know, proper and those were kind of the big differences in the voice. And I don't know, hopefully they were distinct enough. I no, you, think you did a great animation. job. <laughs> were, were, you, uh, were you method and you put on your burlap sack to record Erica? Yes. And, like, totally. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, it was hard to get the tiara underneath the headphones, but right. we managed to, yeah, we managed to do it. <laughs> uh, which, I, which Barbie do you think you're more like, Annalise or Erica? Erica, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been nice to grow up a princess, but yeah. <laughs> it's crappy. No Disney then. Last upbringing, <laughs> uh, but I guess so. Somewhere in between the two is the is the right answer. But yeah, if I'm Erica, felt no. more more like me, kind of more in the pocket. Did you always have a favorite line from any of the Barbie movies you did besides the the kind, clever, and brave from The Nutcracker? Anything that really stuck out to you? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I, I always loved that whole sequence in Princess and the Prop Proper when Erica's in the bedroom and she's talking to Wolfie and she's trying to figure out how to be on Elise, like that first morning, which is be a princess, be a princess. And she goes kind of way over the top when the when the maid <laughs> knocks on the door. Um, <laughs> I I don't know. There were so many great great moments. It was uh, it's hard to pick just one. And we have, so have many been the before. toughest the toughest scene to be both in the same scene. Too right? yeah, it gets Going very meta when you're playing yeah. one character pretending to be another character who's also my sister, my daughter, my sister, my daughter. <laughs> 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 I don't I don't remember yeah. Kelly maybe you remember or Jen you do did we record or will um did we record all of Erica on one day and all of Annalise on another day so you could stay in character I don't remember I think that's what we did I, I think you kind of ran through the lines as one uh girl first and then would go through against and we would play what you had done at times so you could hear right hear the, the cadence that's right yeah yeah, to match later yeah. on, I'm sure. Because yeah. how many recording sessions do you do you usually do for a film, especially if just for Barbie's particular role? Well, there would always be a big beast of three or four days where we do like you know kind of a huge master pass of the whole thing, and then I would go in for pickups throughout the following usually like year, um, where they slightly change a scene or they'd need a different read for something, and so I'd go in for <clears throat> however long they need need me to call them pickups, pickup sessions. So mm -hmm. yeah, but the bulk of it got done in a couple of days, a couple of long days, but yeah. I was curious because sometimes you hear that some people are pulled in, you know, they're, they do it for the first month and then they don't hear back for like three months and they're like, oh, you need to come back in. And, but this process sounded like it was so fast. It was like, let's get it right to the point. You guys had everything you needed and rocking and rolling. So that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we tried to keep it pretty iterative and because the animators would, you know, in order to get the best acting, you really needed the right take to work with. Um, you couldn't, you know, animate to a work in progress take. It was not efficient. Yeah. So kind of really had to settle on the voice, the song, the cadence, the beat before unleashing the animators. <laughs> to <laughs> think that then they're the actors. <laughs> Well, Jillian has a question in the chat. Have you considered adapting Princess and the Pauper into a full-length stage musical? <laughs> oh, I, I, Rob and I talked about this all, all, off the record, but go ahead, Rob. Do you have an answer? <laughs> well, a lot of people have asked Megan and Amy and me that question yes. um, because it's 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 written that way, right? It would be perfect. It would be so obvious, but it was never... It never quite fit Mattel's strategic plan for Barbie. So it, um, we did do a whole separate um, Barbie and Fairytopia stage thing that toured around the country and did another yes. show for Asia. But it, um, this obviously would be perfect, but um, it just hasn't been in their strategic plan. So that's why it hasn't happened. Send but in your petition. Things change. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you don't you don't know what will happen. And um, also after seeing 
Barbie, which I would have loved to see with you, <laughs> Rob <laughs> and Amy. We should see that together. <laughs> I, I've seen it twice. Um, I have to say that um, we were under different, um, Mattel, it was a different time. It was 20 years ago. And so things things were different. And so, um, you know, I, I know one of my producers went to Mattel and they said, no, we're, we're more of a toy company and things. But um, there's always um, people around who are interested in, it in talking to Mattel, even right now. So sure. we just hope we hope yeah and just to throw it out there because life is long and you never ever know obviously none of us could ever have imagined this new barbie era 20 yeah. years ago we never would have imagined mm -hmm. the Greta barbie era but it just so happens that um my husband is a film and tv and broadway producer and uh, he and his company have a meeting with Mattel coming right up. So you never know. Ooh. Stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> Stay and tuned. on that note, too, my, my agent, who is also a manager, Richard Kraft, also has something going on that he won't tell me about <laughs> as well. So it's like you don't you don't know. Like, um, Rob knows in, in more him. about Mattel <laughs> than us. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, there was a Broadway producer who had the cash and everything to do it. Um, but maybe there's um, hope for Barbie to to be a email, email their but customer Megan, service. He's still line around, and right? Say you want. Yeah. yeah. The chat's going crazy. Faith says we need to start a petition. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're gonna do it right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even just a traveling concert, because I feel like that's yes. something that's been more notable. Mm. Like uh, Elf went on con, uh, went on tour with John Debney, the composer, and the Lord of the Rings goes on tour, and all these different movies have been going on tour. So I'm just curious. Like that would be great, just a Barbie that's concert easy. in general. That's the easy you know? thing. That would be really easy. And you know, there have been those shows at Studio Fifty Four. Oh yeah, yeah. Been a lot of shows. So, uh, 54 One of my students like was in that. Below. Yeah, a different, a different era. Nice, right? Era. But, but I know what you're else? Fifty-four below. Fifty-four you know, below. Does them all the time. Our yeah. composer. Costume. Our and underscore sing. composer on this movie, Arnie Roth, um, who was our composer on many movies and is amazing, and uh, he does that for Final Fantasy. He tours all over the world playing that cool. music huge huge venues so he's a superstar himself so we were lucky to work with him okay and get the kelly, you can kind of like narrate it right <laughs> what i was just gonna say kelly can narrate it melissa and julie you guys just reprise your roles you know that'd be great <laughs> and bring okay, brian yeah. back <laughs> we'll finally get to work together in person i've actually never met melissa or julie so i know no. me? You're kind of you're, like, you're like my my twin yeah. yeah, we like well, email so like funny, a couple times. I, yeah, you really I have, have um, nice cred. A lot of people think I did the singing in the movies, and I correct them at every chance I get. Oh. But, um, <laughs> well, and a lot of people think that I did the speaking voice. So, um, but I have okay, an eight-year-old so now. Yeah, and she <laughs> loves the Barbie movies. Um, not so much the sort of older generation Barbie movies, but the newer ones. And uh, um, so she loves your voice. Yeah. She loves the movies. Awesome. And you guys yeah, sent some pictures. I, I, I'm i sorry I'm not been, been <laughs> yeah. bringing them up, but here are some behind the scenes pictures <laughs> oh, of my like God. recording, right? <laughs> That's my I've God. never seen that one. Before. I've never seen that one. <laughs> I brought that it. Like... Wow. And Julie's pretending to play piano. I guess. <laughs> yeah. And there's me. Yep. And there we are, oh, that's yeah. singer. And that's Laura. Yeah, so oh, Laura yeah. voiced the yes, uh, okay. doll. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow. Fantastic. Man, we were so thin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> oh, it's so great. These are so fun. Yeah. Can I just say, th this is the cool thing. When I got this email, it has the date of February 26th, which is my birthday. And I went, oh. oh. <laughs> it's like, what are the odds, right? <laughs> You're recording my favorite songs on my birthday Aww. years ago. I love it. <laughs> and who is everybody oh, in the oh, oh, <laughs> Look at that. I was Pregger. Wow. <laughs> That's Jessica. You certainly were. 
I Jessica Durchin on the lower left, our producer yeah. on so many yeah. movies. Amazing. And, that's, Amazing. and Arnie Roth, the Arnie. composer I was just talking, just mentioning Roth. on the right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Love that. <laughs> now, did you guys, did you guys remember that uh, this was a thing, the Macy Day Parade? Yes. 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 We were, oh yeah. my gosh. It yes. was amazing. I was in and, New York. And we made the Jimmy Kimmel show too. This, like the, what? this, the Barbies, us singing made the Jimmy Kimmel show. No way. <laughs> we did because now they, cool. the sound was off or something and he mentioned it, it was pretty funny. Yeah. These kind are some exciting. behind the scenes photos I found, but here's the whole float. Look at this thing. Oh, beautiful. Oh, wow. oh, that. A nice job. Yeah. Yeah. We got to come in and like record specifically for the parades. Yeah. That's why I was like, oh, you could have cool. just picked this up and put it on stage and boom. <laughs> it's and there, you know what I mean? <laughs> but that, that looks great. It, and it looked like there's some video footage for anybody who wants to look at it because it looked like there were a couple more Barbie films that were yeah. featured later on. And it looked like this was the, not the same set, but the same like layout that they, they did. And I, I, I just, I don't remember this, but good Lord. I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Island Prince has had a float. And I think huge. Yeah. yeah. That has a lot of TikTok right now. <laughs> Island Princess? Check that out. Yeah. Really big on TikTok. Speaking of TikTok, the, uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to go back um, uh, again. Bibble and Preminger always popping up on TikTok. All of these songs from the Princess <laughs> and the Popper. But the fans are so creative. Now, I don't have a lot of photo. I don't really have any photos, but I found this, this fan made a music remix of Preminger. And I thought it was just too silly and too funny not to play. So here's just a little bit of a taste of what TikTok has been <laughs> giving us it. these past couple of years. Here we go <laughs> for it. <laughs> How could I refuse? <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is what I see wow. every day. <laughs> All the time. It's, it's just incredible. Like, your creativity has gone to a different level of creativity. You know, it, Here's more. it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> they just love it. it, it and it's so funny because, like, it, it, we, uh, you know, you, you, I think... I thought that my sister and I were the only ones that were watching this because I never really talked about it with my friends. And then just seeing over the past years online and how, <laughs> you know, internet has connected us all. And you know that now you're not the only one <laughs> who has been really enjoying yeah. the fun like, that is. 25 million, you know, yes. on Facebook and things, yeah. things like that, that people just watch it. And like, I'm like, what? <laughs> it helps me get work. But but it's also like um, different generations do different things with it. So that's awesome. I like the duetting. I like watching the girls duet. And me too. Duet too. Yeah. Oh, that too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of cover songs, lots of fan clubs, um, lots of, you know, these are people that are now that watched Barbie as children that are now entering their late twenties and early thirties who are having mm -hmm. children of their own, who are introducing <laughs> Barbie to their kids and starting their, starting just growing their own fan clubs in their own homes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with their children. My daughter, my daughter turns 30 this year. And so she was the perfect age for these movies. And I worked on the first yeah. mm -hmm. seven of them. Oh. So this was, I think, the fourth. Yes, yeah, the fourth one, and then I directed the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh one, and it had lots of ballet in it, and she was in ballet, so it was perfect. Ooh. I was a hero yeah. for a short time. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that. Really <laughs> well <with> that, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've dropped this pebble in a pond, and it's so fun to just see these ripples continue to echo. You know, it's timeless, and that speaks a lot to the stories that I think we all tried to tell as they're timeless stories. They're, yeah. you know, iconic, they're archetypal. So they just continue and to resonate like with people. Apology consultant, apparently. Yeah, that's super cool. Thank yeah. you, Rob. Yeah, Rob, no, no. I remember you talking about that too. That meant a lot to us. Well, it's deep stuff. It works for a reason. Yeah. You know, it's worked yeah. for thousands of years. And so that's why we, that's why we did it. And you hired two yeah. women, <laughs> Thank which you wasn't for that the too. thing at the time, 
to, to hire women as composers I didn't, and you was, you just went for it for women I just wanted to hire the best story. people that's so but there you that are. was the thing at the time Rob so I applaud you on that and I'm always grateful for you for that and all uh, the other things that we've done together well, it was a privilege no I think we were a big family making these movies and uh, yeah, I'm very, well, very proud of what we've done. Yeah. And, and poor Rob, I, I was, I was blowing up his phone. Not really, but yes, I was sending him <laughs> TikToks. My sister and I had made during Halloween because I, I, I decided we were going to do something special. So here's a little sneak peek of what we did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So we, we did awesome. it this year. We did it last year for Halloween. <laughs> we couldn't help ourselves. We had too much fun just kind of dressing up and and because uh, everybody's everybody was the other Barbie, and I was like, we've got to be our Barbie, right. which was yeah. So it was so much fun. <laughs> and I and I gotta ask one more question because I I don't remember this happening for the other three films before it, but I loved how you guys added the bloopers at the end of the film as if they they were doing actual bloopers. So let me play it and then let's talk about it. Here's a here's a clip and you'll hear Kelly as well too. Huh? Uh, Nick, um, you're supposed to jump into the car. Right, I knew that. Is that really me in there <laughs> looking at me? Lucky me. <laughs> Breathtaking. <sighs> huh? Sorry. <laughs> How romantic, right? <laughs> Very handsome. Very fit. Very irresistible. <laughs> well, so how did you guys get that idea to add that well martin short had improvised most of those in the sessions and um i don't know whose idea it was to do that do you remember jen or will or greg i think it was I, I, an avid I talk and we just thought, i mean yeah. we do that stuff we do that stuff kind of regardless anyways in editorial like we're always messing around every show i've ever worked on has like outtakes and blooper stuff that we mess around with <laughs> some of it that can't be shared but uh <laughs> darn I, I don't remember <laughs> whose idea it was to do this but then some of it would have been somewhat organic like things we already had from the record that we could build on and then other stuff we would have to kind of think like okay what's what's production friendly you know, like what we right. do fairly easily with the sets and props and things we have. But then I, I know we recorded those lines specifically for the bloopers. We did. And we recorded the voice of the director in there is actually Russell Ahrens, who was the head of Barbie marketing at the time. And, uh, wow. and so we brought her in to do that and she did a great job. Yeah, that's right. That's awesome. Yeah. And we did we did those on many subsequent films, didn't we? Like I I forgot that that was the first one, but Yeah, they were a hit. We did them on was a bunch of the first yeah. one we did it on, eh? This one? Huh. Yeah. I guess so. Is that right, Tammy? That's what you noticed when you were looking Yeah, back? it was. I yeah. cuz I was trying to look <clears> back cuz I I totally didn't remember it and I and I was watching the movie day. I'm like, I totally forgot about the bloopers and they're really funny. The whole thing I think is up on YouTube too cuz people just love posting it on TikTok and YouTube. So, uh cuz everybody's like, "Well, where's the break dancing one i said i'm sorry i couldn't include the whole thing youtube right. will copyright me to the end um <laughs> yeah but i remember for the subsequent movies we then knew we were going to be doing bloopers so we could kind of plan them through a production like if we came to a scene and had an idea like oh you know this would be funny if this happened instead especially like the physical comedy stuff all right that's a great idea, though. I, I I love it. I think it's it, and it kind of just adds this different layer of element to it too. So, but but we're we're kind of rounding down. I can't believe it. We've already been talking for an hour and thirty. I'm so glad you guys all came on. This was so much fun. Um, but let's go through one by one before we do our our uh, our second Kodak photo. But let's go one by one. If you could tell me one word that kind of sums up your experience of the Princess and the Pauper specifically. And William, you are the first. I'm sorry. Directors go first. <laughs> Purely magical. It was uh, an incredible experience all the way through. I mean, just the look at the talent on the screen. It's, uh, it was an incredible time. And, you know, every element of, of the process 
was uh, just so creative and so collaborative, just working with each other and just the building on, you know, something that was already amazing uh, that, that came from Mattel. And can you believe it? Like this universe came from a doll, right? It's, it's, it's uh, incredible. Sorry, that's more than one word. I love it. Rob, what do you think? Well, my one word would be joy. And um, because it was a joy to make this and I couldn't, I guess the second word would be proud. I couldn't be more proud of what we all did together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Jennifer? Oh, I think I'd say magic. I think there was some magic in the air and just the friends I've made for life and the experiences to always keep in your pocket for a rainy day. Um, you know, I think there is some magic. Melissa? I'm going to say lucky. I feel so lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To have gotten this whole experience. Changed my life. Yeah. Julie? Oh, I was going to say privilege. So, yeah, I kind of feel the same way. It just, um, yeah, it's just, it lives on. It really does. It's, it's going to be an evergreen, I feel like. Megan? I feel collaborative. I think uh, the joy of collaboration, when you leave your ego at the door and make yourself vulnerable to what can be, makes things great. And so this was one of the greatest collaborations I've ever had in my life and I've had many. And so I'm grateful for the collaboration uh, and the trust that um, everyone had in each other. Greg, what about you? Wow, I like all of those words. What words are left? <laughs> I, I will go with opportunity because this was a great one to do this. This was early in my career and it was a great experience. I loved working on it with all these wonderful people. And so, yeah, opportunity. It started something for me and still going, still working in the industry 25 years later, 20 years later. So. Amy? Inspiring. Uh, I, yeah. I loved being a part of this. I loved being able to, uh, as Megan said, collaborate so mm -hmm. freely. Um, it, it inspired me to reach into uh, a part of myself that I had discovered before that point and um, get to see how it impacted the world at that point and ongoing. And last but not least, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, you know, what words are left? I would say meaningful. Uh, you know, of course, it was meaningful to me personally, and very meaningful for my to my career. But it's also been so wonderful to see how meaningful it is to fans of the, mm -hmm. of the film. And it's probably the one that people talk to me the most about when they mention Barbie. That you know, it's most people's wow. favorite. It's the yeah. most you know cameo requests and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's this one. So meaningful. Mm -hmm. Well, I, again, the chat is just continuing to go. I'm going to bring up some of your comments as we close out um, with the outro, but I just wanted to thank you all again for your time. I know we've been trying to put this together for a while. So <laughs> thank you for your patience and making this happen. Thank you for coming tonight. Happy 20 years because you all you all made a great impact on all of us, and uh, and I was just thinking some this musical might have been the first musical for many children, so that's yeah. that's something to put in your your little cap right there, which is awesome. Yes. Yes. So let's take a Kodak photo. Uh, one more, everybody, look at the camera. <laughs> one, two, three. Perfect. And and again, thank you to everybody who's been joining us this evening. We've had over 150 people watching live, which is thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Um, if you'd like to see more interviews, reunions, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Let's share this conversation where pretty much all of us are on Instagram and Twitter and social media. So I'm sure you'll be able to find us. I'll put those in the show notes below so you can connect with everybody. Um, feel free to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Tammy Tucky or, and also on Facebook. Um, and thanks again to everybody. This has been so much fun. Thank you. Thank you for your time, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great scene, everybody. Wow. Yeah, happy 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Happy 20th. Happy 20th. <laughs> Bye. Happy, happy anniversary, everybody. And remember that there's more to gloves. There's more to gowns. There's more to threads and seams. In our dreams, we will all be free. So thank you all so much. This has been such a blast. And have a good evening, you guys. <laughs>
Good day. Phenomenal. Bye, Barbie. <laughs> such a plan. Bye, Barbie. Bye, Barbie. Bye, Sis. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.